Fine. Hi, everybody. This is Joanne Eisen with Reach the Unlimited. And as we have been talking, we have Janine here, who's going to be doing some trans medium for us, mediumship. So thank you so much for coming back and doing part two of our interview. I'm so excited to have you, Janine. I'm here again. <laughs> You can't miss me, can you? You see me most weekends. Yeah, uh, I'm here. <laughs> you know, before we get going in this, and I, uh, yeah. Oh, me froze then. Make sure I calm it's going. Um, can you tell people what to expect a little bit if they haven't been associated or know about trans mediumship? Yeah. Um, with trance, I mean, basically, you've got your normal mediumship, haven't you, where the, the medium brings the information through from spirit and relays it to the client. But with trance, the guides come a little bit closer into the energy and into the consciousness and the aura, and they take over a little bit more. They just come a little bit closer and take over the vocality and have more control of what's been said. So it's more of the medium getting out of the way and allowing the spirit world to talk instead. I love that. That's the part I'm still working on. The yeah. meeting get out of the way. <laughs> oh, I still get in the way. Believe you me, sometimes I do. Yeah. Hi, Pearl. Um, so I don't know if, I guess we can talk. There's only, oh, no, there's eight people. Okay. Do you want to, is there anything you want to share with people before we get going? I'd kind of like to give people a few more minutes. Um, oh, I mean, um, I suppose trust could be a big thing. Yeah. I suppose for a lot of a lot of trance mediums sort of come to me and say, Oh, Janine, I don't trust yet. Why am I not speaking? And and all this sort of stuff. But I think it's a lot of people think it's them that are speaking and not the guides. Mm -hmm. But I think we have to speak with our hearts before our guides can yeah. start to speak through us. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Totally. And and having the courage to, to speak from what we are feeling. Mm -hmm. because I found with my guides once I did that and they showed me to do that mm -hmm. they immediately stepped into my energy and I think unless we connect with our own spirit and our own heart and our own healing they can't get any closer do you see what I mean and, and I totally yeah and I find with me it's that trust is a really big issue because um you're always fighting that mental mind of the trusting and and it being you and then you get in your own way and so you don't end up actually surrendering because you're battling yeah. where if you just trust and just go with it then everything flows yeah do you know what i mean it's like a weird combination yeah, yeah. i remember in the early days what well, still is the early days for me i'm still learning but I can remember in the very early days, they would bring me one word. My mm -hmm. guides would bring me one word and they would tell me to say it in trance state. Mm -hmm. and they would shout it at me actually sometimes because I wasn't listening. They'd tell me to say it. And as soon as I opened my mouth and said that, they just took over the whole conversation. Mm -hmm. So the only element of me at that point was that beginning of that one sentence or word. Yeah. It's almost like they gave me a little, a little bit of support to make that next step. And I think... Right. If any mediums out there ever hear their guide saying something in their heads, just say it. Just say it because once you say it, mm -hmm. they they'll just take over, and then before you know it, you won't remember what's been said, and it won't be anything to do with you or be with your guides. It's just having that courage, isn't it? To yes. help and, and you know, it's the same yeah. with doing trance or you're doing physical mediumship because both you still have that same factor of just trusting what you're hearing because. Look, as you know, even just doing mediumship, you could be like, am I making that up? Or is that really coming? Or it doesn't make sense to me. I mean, we're always analyzing. And that's where the trust comes in of putting your mind behind you and just yeah. allowing. Like the first time I spoke in trance, I was like, I, I heard the word because the same thing happened. I heard the word. And then I was like, but anything beyond that, I was overthinking it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's so frustrating when you know what to do. It's like, how hard is this to just allow? And you just yeah. don't, you know, yeah. it's urgh. anyway. It's really funny, isn't it? <laughs> hi, Sarah. Hi, Marsha. Hi, Sherry and Marilyn. Oh, you guys are here. Yay. From you Canada. Too. Sharon from Sharon Lee from Canada. I haven't seen you in a while, Sharon. I hope everything is good with you. <laughs> so would you like to start now? And then we can answer, answer a few questions at the end. 
Yeah, absolutely. Yes, I'll be all right. Like to your... Stick my hair up. We don't want that flipping around in my face. <laughs> oh, dear. Okay, then. All right, then. Oh, let's get comfortable here. Can, the question is, can you hear me all right? I can. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's okay. Okay, I'll do a little opening prayer then, shall I? Yes. Okay. May we invite my beautiful trance guides to come into this space, to come in and blend as we welcome the spirit world. We welcome you with the highest vibration and protection with the angels as we welcome you to come and blend with me and to bring your inspiration, your love and your joy. Amen. <laughs> okay. Amen. See you in a minute. Okay. We're going to just sit while she's doing this, everybody. Welcome, my dear. <laughs> Hi, Richard. How are you today? Well, very happy, of course, and uh, always happy indeed to come through and, uh, I would say, communicate with you. And uh, yes, Janine is very relaxed indeed, of course. <laughs> well, thank you for taking the time to share your wisdom with us. Yes, it takes a little bit of time for Janine to relax a little bit into that, I would say, energy. And we have to come in a little bit stronger at times. But uh, 
we soon balance the vibration out for her to be able to adjust and cope as we all do with you too when you are working with the energy of course we are here to graciously answer some questions of course we're always eager <laughs> richard would you have anything you would like to share with us before we start with questions well of course uh janine is uh and she talks herself as you understand that she gets a little bit nervous doesn't she she doesn't uh, like being interviewed but uh, i am talking now a little bit but please tell me if i continue for too long but uh, as you know many of you will be struggling at the moment uh, with very varying emotions i would say do with your awakening as you call it the vibrational energy trying to adjust but there has been much going on between the consciousness of spirit and the physical world that you are living in, the connection with family and friends, the vibration and communication, getting that, I should say, communication correct. Many families you will find will have a process of, I would say, a little bit of divide and uh, being further apart on the emotional sense during this time because many of you, your energetic changes will be coming into that different vibration and connection with family can be quite difficult during this time. The reason I have brought up this subject for you, my dear, is the sensing that uh, many will be struggling with this. But I would say about the vibration of your energy, there is much color within your vibration. Once you connect to that spiritual self, that color vibration within your consciousness will start to change. Of course, everybody that you are all communicating with will start to change through and react to your vibrational energy that your consciousness raises. And some may not change during this time, but you are going many through, I would say, uh, difficult situation. Some will go through that process of their changing and awakening and I would say spiritual connection, but some may not. They may choose to not go for it or go for it. It just depends on them. But when you are going through this process, you will find colors and energy will start to react to your energetic field, your DNA, your consciousness and your physical self. But it's not just a reaction to each other, it is a reaction to yourselves, the healing process. Many of you will have trauma that will come up to the surface now, and you will try to connect to that trauma and work through it through this time. But whilst you're working through it, that vibration has got to change. You have to face the trauma, I would say, during this time and work through that in order for that vibration to change. But the colours, you're probably going to wonder, aren't you, my dear, what has colours got to do with the vibrational changes of healing and the connection to others? It has everything to do with it. Your auric field, your energy is communicating with the person that you are talking to. You are talking to Janine tonight. Her energy field will react to yours. The vibrational colors will react. The healing that she is going through, the healing that you're going through too, will react to that energy. But once you start to work on yourselves, those molecules of color within your vibration will start to rise, start to change. The, the colors will vibrate differently. You associate, I would say, the auric layers having a vibrational color. You have many different colors, don't you? You have uh, the pink, and I would say greens, and many other colors within your auric layers. They will start to change. The colors will start to change. You associate the chakras, but we don't call them that. They are just the forms of energy within your energy field, your energetic field. They will start to vibrate and the colors will start to change as you understand. But what we are trying to encourage you all to do at the moment is to understand when you are going through the healing, is to face it, experience it, I would say, and try to understand what is happening. Because your aura, 
your healing, your vibrational colors around your energetic field will be stimulated. They will change with that vibration. So the only way I would say for you all to move forward in this vibration, the awakening, your soul, is to challenge those difficult times. Challenge the times that you're having difficult times with your family and the communication breaks down. Go and challenge it. Work with your families. Work with your children, your mums and dads, grandparents. Go and sort those differences out. Raise the vibration and work through them. You might find, well, you know, I don't always get on with my family. But if you come to a resolve and just work through that, your vibrations will change. They will vibrate in a much, I would say, a better state of energy and energetic vibration. Hence, we'll be able to come closer into your energy. Do you see what I mean, dear? I do. To you. So uh, I'm trying to explain in a way that is understandable. Many will feel, well, I have faded away from my family members during this time and I don't feel very connected to them. What is happening? I feel lost and alone. But we work through this and we work through it with Janine too. This has come to you all to connect with your family to show the unconditional love and to appraise them and love them unconditionally and work through those emotional traumas. This is the great vibration, awakening of your soul. It is the only way to heal. The more that you run and run away, the more that you will hold the energy back and the vibration of your awakening back. We want to communicate with you. We want to talk to you. We want to connect to you in many different abilities, through many different skills and vibrations in your spiritual world. We don't sort of force you to heal, but we ask you to take the time, find the healing within family, find a healing within yourself and your own vibration. This is what it's all about, isn't it, my dear? It is the vibration of connecting to yourself. Do not worry, I know that uh, many that are listening, that we can't see them, of course, but uh, they will be working through that healing. And will be going, well, I want to work with my medium trip. I want to work with my connection to spirit, and I want to try to do this. But I will really say to Janine, look on the self. This is going to be the greatest vibration for you to work and to move forward. As I have come to Janine in many different energies and vibrations within her world, and overshadowed her to bring that information. But many of the, I would say, we call them the light workers, many of the uh, spiritual people that uh, work with the connection of spirit and helping them cross over to the other side. What you must understand is many of the spiritual beings, including myself, we are still, I would say, trying to get through the healing process. We are healing within the spirit. We are connecting and raising our vibration too. If we are in the physical realm, it's just we've decided to do it from spirit and to come to help you raise your consciousness. We could more than bring our souls together as one. Your guide, for instance, my dear friend, looking at the earth even more once they start to heal from spirit's knowledge. Even more, and once you start to heal, you'll become one of consciousness of information that will flow that way. The information will flow in the right way the space of time. And you will receive that information and that connection much quicker. You will be aware of this. It is the people who stand in your being blind. Consciousness of communication with that is uh, That was beautiful and very important, I think, at this time. But I have a question about when you were talking about unconditional love and how I realize as we're humans on this planet, that is a very difficult thing for us to actually do. Do you have any advice for us to being able to 
walk in unconditional love as we live on this planet. Well, I'm not going to uh, quote too many religious terms at you because we know in this in the spirit side of life, and many will not necessarily want to hear. But God's presence, he came with unconditional love, that great connection of love for you all, who lived her life and had experiences. Many of you have got the same. You have a name and you have a different situation to deal with in your life. And each and every situation you experience, just like you have done, you have to learn to love for them to feel the great happiness. You see how to speak. Many of you will react to certain situations as you may have some situations that are not things of surrounding around you. But once you find that you have unconditional love, you will not need to react to the situation around you. I will give you a little example. You are reacting to a family member you feel hurt from them during this time and you say, well, they don't understand me. Why don't they understand me? I feel like I'm not accepted by my family now. But I feel the sense to bring it to me. The reason that you are reacting to the situation with that family member or a friend is because of the unconditional love that is not conceived within oneself as yet. Or it is learning to go into but of course, within your lifetime, your life, you will not be able to say a few things in your life in just a lifetime. It will take you, I would say, in your lifetime to achieve this. But God is coming his cross. He always loved you and me, and he was coming to him then. Even when he wasn't accepted by his followers and his family, he still loved them unconditionally. He didn't just send them love. He felt that the world belongs to the human nature. And he was still into that time of passing when he felt unwell and poorly and he was condemned for more. He still felt that love for all and for himself. But the only way that that has been achieved is to feel that very essence for himself. And to can feel that for others around him. If you're going to think, well, how can I start to love myself unconditionally? How can I possibly start to do that? But you are that child of God, my dear. Wouldn't you come in for that time and you see that beautiful, innocent child that you see well that? When you were toddling around with a young toddler, you would not find her, you would care for her and look after her and take care of her. You always believe in her and love her unconditionally or her. You would never be a circumstance to do. You would come in that place of the flesh and be restored from her broken energy. Of course, she has been in spirit before. The spirit has given you a new. So she has not been in that unconditional love place before within the spirit. You have helped many other mediums, but you want to remember the consciousness to remember that time. So you have held it there within your heart already. A great and still there to keep in the connection and connection for oneself. Beautiful. Um, I have a question that somebody sent in that's similar to this. How can we raise our vibration in this tough time and trust and deal with the changes happening in our world? Well, there are many changes. Hello, my dear. Hi, Alice. Nice to see you. I'd like to talk a little bit. But you were saying, weren't you, my dear, how can you change the circumstances? You repeat, my dear. How can we raise our vibration in this tough time to trust and to deal with the changes that are happening in our world right now? 
Well, very much easier said than done, isn't it, my dear? <laughs> yes, but, it is. Uh, uh, quite often I will say it in a certain way and others might say, well, I don't understand that, Alice. It is easier said than done. You make it look very rosy and very beautiful. But uh, I would say, you know, as Richard was talking about a minute ago, my dear, it is changing the reaction. It's rather like when you react to a situation, isn't it? You have two magnets that come together and they cling together, they react, don't they, my dear? But your vibration, your consciousness, has the ability to change the circumstance and the reaction to your surroundings. You have full control, my dear. You see what I mean? You have control of your energy, you have control of your surroundings, you have control of your mind and your logical mind. You control this through the spirit. The Richard would talk at great length about this. It is getting the spirit of yourself to connect to the physical self and to bring that information forward, to tell the mind in the physical form that anything can be changed and your reality can be changed in what you decide you want it to be. Now, Janine, it's... Uh, struggling with this, I like to say. I'm not going to give her a telling off in the public uh, place, but uh, we do tell her, come on, Janine, start connecting and start trying to uh, change your reality a little bit. Because she tends to get a little bit upset sometimes and think, well, you know, I, I feel a little bit unhappy today and I, I can't seem to change this situation and I seem to be controlled by a lot. But we try to explain to her and, and to yourself and many others that are listening today is that you have control. Your spirit has always had control. The whole time that you've come to Mother Earth to live this life again, it is telling the soul and communicating with the soul and allowing it to communicate with you. And you're going to think, well, I can't really change the situation that there's negativity going on around me and what is happening. It is changing the response that you have to that situation. You can change your energy. We change our energy when we come and talk to Janine. We have to, I would say, bring our energy down to a lower frequency because the energy is much denser in your world. To allow the communication to come through Janine. So we have to adjust our energies if that makes us a little bit clearer. And you have the capability, everybody here today has the capability of adjusting their energy frequency. You are spirit. You are just like me and Richard and all of us that communicate through Janine. You have the power to change your reality. It's just that your minds have been trained to do the opposite, of course, in your physical world. It is changing that uh, vibration, the mindset, and retraining yourself and saying, well, okay, I'm in a negative situation, but I'm going to turn it into a positive. I'm going to bring the positive energy and I'm going to react with it with a challenge and a positive intent. And I'm going to bring something wonderful from the situation. And as Richard was talking about earlier, my dear, as we do tend to talk quite a lot, so you will have to rein us in a little bit if we talk for too long. But changing that energy, your vibration is colours. It's colour vibration, energy frequency, as Richard was saying, and the sound vibration too. You can speed your vibration up, you can slow it down, you can do what you want with it. If only you allow the soul to communicate with the mind and take the information from that soul. That is your spirit. Communicate with it. Be with it. You are part of it. In the physical world, we watch you all. And as many millennia and hundreds of years have gone by, less and less humans um, are equipped to connect with the soul. They have forgotten. They are very largely focused within the physical mind. And we try to show you from spirit. Come into the spirit. Live with your spirit. Do what the spirit desires. When you feel like feeling like doing something or experiencing something, allow your spirit to guide you. Allow it to guide you on your path, of your earthly path. You can't go wrong then, can you, my dear? I cannot. That's, that's great advice. 
Um, what is the difference between spirit and soul? Well, the spirit is part of the soul. It is the two same elements of energy, isn't it, my dear? It is vibrating at the same frequency. It is the world that you have been brought up into, isn't it? How you uh, vocalize and how you understand the soul, the spirit and the physical mind and the physical form. It's just your identification, the understanding that you have learned. Do you see what I mean? It, some, it would be like your personal uh, signature tone. Yes, of course. Mm -hmm. And of course, your soul is the spirit. Mm -hmm. You see, you are coexisting in the spiritual realm already, even though you're in this earthly existence. Your higher self, as most of you will understand, you say, well, I'm connecting to my higher self. I'm not connecting to the spiritual realm. But of course you are connecting to spirit because you already are in the spirit realm, my dear. It's just that you are, as Richard Keith will explain, is that you're multifaceted, aren't you, my dear? There are many elements of your soul that are split and divided. You're in many different lifetimes. You're in the future, past and present. You have stores of information within yourselves. You have the wisdom, the philosophy and intelligence from many different lifetimes mm -hmm. that you have been and going to and experiencing right now. You see? I do. Thank you. That's beautiful. So with that being said, another question somebody had is, what is the difference between the conscious channeler and a trance medium? Well, it, uh, there is a great difference, I would say, as uh, Janine already knows. But the vibration uh, with your mediumship, of course, you will receive that information as I connect through Janine. I will install that information or bring a loved one forward to her. But I still come into that energy of Janine and that vibration into her soul and spirit and her auric field, as you all understand. But when we come a little bit closer into that trance energy, I come a little bit closer into Janine's vibration. But uh, as both me and Alice uh, will greatly will discuss, it is about the sound vibration and the colours again, isn't it? Mm -hmm. We will manipulate that sound vibration and the colours together. Because many molecules of vibrational colours will blend and vibrate at a certain speed as you associate the speed of light, don't you, in your realm. But you have a speed of uh, consciousness, light, color, energy, and many other different forms within your energetic field. But when we come into that trance state, we will manipulate that. We will slow down the, I would say, the vibration and the colors that are uh, within your auric field that you associate with. We will change and manipulate the colors there. But you associate different, uh, I would say, colours, don't you, my dear? But you understand the different uh, colours, like the reds, the pinks, and uh, the yellow, for example. But we don't see them in that vibrational colour. We see them as a pure white light, a vibrational colour. But we will work through these, and work through that vibration, and we will work through the, the DNA too. When we come into that trance state, the DNA within your auric field will hold many, I would say, uh, much information from past lives, information from your life now, the intelligence and wisdom from your own spirit. And we will merge with that information. We will manipulate that information with our consciousness and spirit. So when we are, I would say, talking through Janine, we will be receiving the information from us and from her own spirit too. Because if she was in the spirit realm, which she is, of course, as well as living here, if she was to come and blend into this reality and the living world now with you, my dear, she would bring the essence of her knowledge too to your knowledge. Do you see what I mean? So we just come a little bit closer, we manipulate the DNA, we don't cause havoc or anything like that. We manipulate it as in to a blend with the information that is stored within your DNA molecules. You understand uh, DNA sequences, don't you? The molecules of energy as children are 
born and uh, grown within the womb of the mother, aren't they? They hold, I would say, the DNA of the mum and the dad, but they will also hold the DNA of their own spirit from another life. So many of you will associate and understand the spirit entering the fetus after the fetus is conceived, but it is done much, much earlier than that. Because the brain stem cell of the child needs to be formed, it will be formed in the very first stages of the fetus being mm -hmm. developed. And we will enter the brain stem cells of that small child mm -hmm. through that uh, very microscopic energy. And we will bring our spirit closer to that child. And we will install the information from our spirit and leave it there and come into that new existence of that next life that is chosen to do so but it gets a little bit complicated so i will try not to continue my work. i could ask you a bunch of questions just on that that was fascinating thank you of course. um um wow that was really interesting thank you what can i do to hear my guides better and keep communication flowing freely with them well, I would say it, it takes a little bit of time and to keep that communication going, it is about the healing as I uh, keep Janine out of the way a little bit here. But when you are going through your healing process, the more that you experience in your earthly life, and uh, many of you will go, well, you know, when's it going to ever end? Why am I experiencing so many problems? But you have been sent here to experience that vibration, that trauma. It is part of your um, developing and awakening to get that stronger connection. You see what I mean, my dear, if that is the question that you are asking. So when you go through that healing experience, the DNA, of course, and your body again will react to that stimulus and that vibration that you are going through. It will start to communicate with the physical self. The DNA will start to vibrate at that higher rate of consciousness. It will communicate with you. It will talk to you on the subconscious level. The DNA is always communicating with your brain, the brain stem cells. So, of course, when that uh, you wanted to ask before, when the fetus is coming into the womb and is growing, and we've installed the spirit that chose to come to live on this world and experience reincarnation. The information is installed upon the stem cells of the brain. So you are born with that information. You will be born with many of the traumas that you need to experience and learn from. It will mm. also be there and planted a little bit like a blueprint for you to experience without experience in these challenges we cannot work with you if you imagine it you come into the world and you never go through a negative situation you never go through any trauma or challenges you never have a bad experience with another person you would never awaken you would never spiritually evolve you will never come into that vibration for us to connect to you even more each lifetime that you experience, the vibration comes higher and higher and higher. It may only rise a little bit in one lifetime and it may leap several hundred steps forward in the next lifetime. But you will always come with the imprint and information and the memory, a little bit like the Book of Life, which is all stored in there in your DNA, in your frequency and in your spirit and your physical form. Your physical form is part of your spirit too. It is all there merging together as one, trying to communicate. The soul is trying to desperately communicate with the physical self because the soul knows the information has been implanted into your brain, in the stem cells of your brain, your memories, your vibrations, the traumas from other lives. So the soul needs to reach your physical mind. It needs to reach the physical form of your vibrational body in the physical world. If it cannot communicate, you cannot evolve there too. So we try to teach you, to show you from the spirit, and sometimes it doesn't work, and sometimes it does. But we show you, speak to your spirit, and it will help the connection, 
with the vibration that you are meant to learn from, my dear. That is great words of wisdom. Speak to your spirit. I love that. We don't do that enough. Yes. We try to. Uh, we try not to bore you, my dear. As I know oh. that. Uh, <laughs> Say, Richard, you talk about the same thing all the time. She likes to be in control, but uh, <laughs> you know, we, 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 I would say repeat and repeat, and uh, we don't mind repeating because we don't come with the ego or judgment. Mm -hmm. We don't say we are not listening. Mm -hmm. We'll keep repeating, and we will keep repeating until the soul has reached the mind, and the mind has reached the soul, mm -hmm. and they come as one, don't they? They do. And I think the more repeating, we need that. Uh, as, very good question. I'm going off my direction yet, but um, each soul carries a piece of past life lives, past lives lived. Um, how do we find the current purpose, our current life purpose? Did that make sense? Or should I read that again? I was jo disjointed in that. Well, that is all right. You can repeat again, but... Uh... It comes to the same question, isn't it? It, it kind of does, yes. It's a soul repeating, of course, and communicating with the physical mind. Mm -hmm. The physical mind uh, wants to be educated, doesn't it? It mm -hmm. wants to learn. It wants to understand. It wants to go to college in your world. As we, you know, we didn't have college back in my time, but uh, you go to college, you educate your mind. You take that information into your next lifetime. Mm -hmm. That's part of your learning and evolving in your physical self. And it is taken the information from the physical self to the spiritual self into spiritual realm when you pass. And then you come back into the next lifetime and you bring that information into the next lifetime. But the soul and the physical mind are communicating all the time. You go for a physical life to spiritual life and you are in spirit every ounce of information that you have learned either from the physical world or from the spiritual self they both come together as one form of consciousness they have to vibrate together and learn together and learn to communicate because the soul is your spiritual life i'm going to say the spirit will light to you because you will understand that energy. So if you imagine a ball of energy stood in front of you and that is your soul and you are looking at this soul which is you and your soul is looking at your physical body. Your physical form has the DNA, it has the molecules of energy to communicate with each cell in the body. Each organ, internal organ, your brain, your eyes, every physical form in your body is a cell of vibration, of communication. The eyes, the cells in the back of the eyes, the retina of the eyes are communicating. The cells are all chatting and talking, communicating amongst themselves. But that soul in front of you is part of you too. Mm -hmm. But it is within you and it is communicating with the cells in your physical body too. Everything is communicating, but there is a great divide within the time of your lives at the moment with everything that is going on with, I would say, the uh, this disease that is going on in your world at the moment. You are coming into a great chain, but this is a great opportunity to talk to yourselves, talk to your soul, and vice versa. But there will be many other experiences in your world too. Mm -hmm. Many other traumas, many wars will come. But each time these situations arise, it is all bringing you closer to your spirit. Mm -hmm. But when you are starting, I would say, to feel trauma and negative energy around you, and you're saying, well, I can't cope with this situation anymore. I don't want to cope with it. Why am I here on this earthly plane? Why do I want to deal with this from day to day? As many of you will feel like this during this time. But we are pushing you to connect to your spirit. Once you connect to that spirit, the vibration in your world that is happening around you will not affect you. It will not even relate to you because your spirit will be vibrating. It will be leading you on the path of contentment within yourself, happiness and joy within yourselves. You will not be reacting to the negative stimuli around you. 
you will not need to have the reaction to anything like that anymore. Mm -hmm. If only you can get that greater connection for you all to see that. But you need to heal. You need to learn to look within, look within your own spirit and face it. When a challenge comes along, just go, well, I'm going to deal with this and I'm going to make it into a wonderful experience. I love that. And you're right. We would rather run from it. I think the question that he's asking that a lot of people do ask or wonder is because we're human and we tend to get in our own way, can we get our life purpose wrong? Well, of course, you can get your life purpose wrong sometimes. But uh, when you come here, you have already decided what you want to do with your earthly path. You will already understand what the path is. But of course, when you are here, you won't have a memory of that. So mm -hmm. we sort of leave you to it to take that life course, that path. But we have to allow you to make mistakes. Mm -hmm. Do you see what I mean? If we don't allow you to make mistakes, you will never learn, you will never evolve, you will never make that true progression of that journey. You need to uh, make the mistakes in order to become that stronger individual, haven't you? Mm -hmm. Yes, very true. So in ultimate, the end is we don't really make it wrong or do it wrong, we're just taking a more difficult road. Well, of course, many of you, including Janine, and uh, you must tell her afterwards because she won't remember much. But uh, she tries to strive, and uh, I will be careful what I say now here because I might get a little telling off afterwards. But uh, what she tends to do is that she wants the end result. Janine wants to make it right. It's all going to be good in the end. And she thinks, well, if I get through this challenge, I've achieved it. But of course she has. But it is a never-ending path. You will be forever, in one lifetime after the other, achieving problems and looking at problems and working with them to make things better. These problems never go away. You are on a constant cycle of achieving and learning and understanding through difficult situations. It is a never-ending process. It is limitless. It never ends. Janine thinks it's all going to end and be quite pretty at the end, and of course it will. But you will continue to achieve and come through many different situations and become stronger and wiser. You know, you, you will never come to the end of this. When you come from this lifetime and go to spirit and come to the next lifetime, you will deal with other challenges, of course, along the way. Once you accept that and understand it is a never-ending cycle of development and learning and vibrating. It is a great challenge to achieve. You wouldn't want it to end. Could you imagine your life with no challenges and no problems? I'm not mm -hmm. saying that you should be looking for negative situations. Mm -hmm. That is not what we're implying at all. We are saying to you it is your approach, as Alice was talking mm -hmm. about. If you approach every situation in each lifetime, with a different vibration and you work with the spirit to work through that mm -hmm. you will achieve what you are here and sent to achieve and work through in that vibrational energy but it will never end this is a never-ending cycle i am in spirit now and i will come for another life eventually but i will not leave janine behind like she is here but we all go around in the circle of life. It is continual, just never ending. That vibration is never ending. You will never stop learning. You will never stop having the challenges to deal with, to change the mindset. I love that. But this is an interesting response someone has that I would like to ask you about. Um, Brenda said, that's comforting and depressing. And I feel like the depressing part of it could be like that never ending story of never achieving, but I don't think that's really what you're speaking about. Is that correct? No, which is uh, you are achieving by going through the situations. When you go through the situations, you are achieving the outcome of success of becoming that stronger person. Do you see what I mean? But the cycle of having to go through different challenges will never end. You will 
mm. go through one cycle of different situations that you may be dealing with, whether it be family or illness or whatever it is you're dealing with in your life, you will come into the elevation of consciousness because each time you go into different situations that you are working with, you will raise the consciousness of the spirit of yourself, that information. Because when we are talking through you, many of you, many of you may be, I would say, mediums or uh, trans mediums, whatever it is that you are working with, with your guides and spirit, they will take you through many different, I say, emotional experiences in your life to raise your consciousness. You have to experience the negative in order to experience the positive vibrations. As many of you will understand and notice, you sort of go in little peaks and troughs, don't you, my dear? You come up in consciousness and you're very happy and having a wonderful time, and then you will feel quite low because we will bring something else for you to experience and learn from, or that you have decided to learn from, from the spirit to come into this lifetime. You have chose to experience that. But once you come through that healing process for that one situation that you have experienced is not quite so positive, you will come into that higher vibration. Mm -hmm. Because you see, what we are trying to say is, when you are here as spiritual people, and we're wanting you to help people mm -hmm. on the emotional level of the vibration to help them through difficult situations. We need you to have experienced situations of similar circumstance. You need to have experienced that to create that empathy, I would say, and love and support to give to others. Without the empowerment of knowledge and experience, you cannot help another individual on their soul path. Mm -hmm. Yes, the path is part of your path too. Mm. They need your experience, your knowledge. Each and every one of you will be doing this for one another and the people that you come in, I would say, connection to. I hope that uh, oh. answered the question a little bit more clearly. I hope it did. And that's really encouraging. I love what you said about being spiritual people. That was really um, a good term. And I'm very encouraged to know that we're all here to be with each other and learn from each other. Yes, that's cool. great. Um, we have some animal. We're running out of time, so I want to get to some of the animal questions. But um, what is the purpose of our spiritual animal, our spiritual guide, animal spiritual guide? Sorry, I'm very sorry. What is the purpose of our spirit animal in our life? Well, of course, uh, many of you will understand your spiritual animals. Of course, many of you mediums uh, will have them there to support you and, and guide you. But many of the animals that are coming to you from the spirit have been connected to you for many other lifetimes. Mm. And, uh, maybe your pets and animals that are vibrating with you. But many of the, uh, you call them totem animals, don't you? Many of the lions and tigers and the different forms of animals that want to communicate from the spirit. Many of these animals, yes, are communicating and bringing that guidance for you. But some of us uh, will bring you a symbolic view. And I'm going to say symbolic view is that when we are communicating with you, we can show you any form that we desire and that we want to communicate to you. We will communicate with your subconscious of what you are wanting to see and understand. So I will talk through Janine in this way because I know that you will understand and resonate with the vibration. But sometimes we will show ourselves as very different forms, maybe animals. We will show you different things and connect to you in a different vibration. Even though you were once living, we will bring you the comfort of what your subconscious wants to experience and feel. So we will bring you, I would say, let's give you an example, empowerment. We bring you the lion, the protector, the lion that wants to cherish you and look after you. And you want to nurture your young and protect your boundaries. It comes through in a, a vibration of boundary points. If you are, I would say, connecting to another individual, and that is what you are bringing to them. 
but many of us will show you that as a symbolic stimuli and information to help you to understand the message. But quite often, some of these spiritual animals, yes, they're going to communicate with you. But quite often, many of them will be, many of the pets that you have lived with in your lifetimes and lifetime that you are experiencing now. But quite often, if it is not a pet that is with you in a lifetime that you've lived with, he will quite often just bring you a symbolic view of maybe an elephant or uh, whatever you are feeling that you are needing at that time. He only ever bring what you need and what you are feeling that you need and that comfort. It is with Janine, you know, I am called Richard, and that was my name in a past life. But I have had many past lives. I could speak through Janine in a different language. I could communicate with her with a different name if I chose to do so. But I communicate as Richard, as I once lived at Richard at that lifetime in the 18th century. But I come in that, in that fatherly way, in that protector, somebody can care for her and love for her in the vibration that she is comfortable with. We are just the vibration of our energy. What you feel, see and sense it is what you are comfortable with. And that is why we need you to trust us when we communicate with you. It is all about trust. Mm -hmm. We will only ever bring what you need and what you are wanting at the time, my dear. Mm, that's beautiful. Um, uh, one of the other questions that came in is, can you talk about the elemental fairies? Well, of course, of course. Many of the nature spirits, of course, are on a different vibration to myself. And uh, we all vibrate at different levels and different stages of vibration. Many of the nature spirits have come right from the beginnings of time, from when Earth was very first established within the universe. But the spirit realm, you're going to say, did the spirit realm exist before Mother Earth? Mother Earth existed, I tried to get you mean out of the way. But of course the spirit realm did exist. And Earth did exist before this Mother Earth existed. But of course there's been many millennia and many different planets that have been and gone beyond our time. But the spirit realm is limitless, it is never ending. It is continually going and going all the time. But yes, the elemental nature spirits come from the time of the land when Mother Earth was very first established. But they are forms of consciousness. Mother Earth is consciousness, as you know, and everybody here probably knows already. But you're going to think, how was Mother Earth established and built? Through the consciousness. How can she be created into a physical vibration for you all to live on and experience the nature, the trees, the animals, the earth that you walk upon? It's all created with a vibration of consciousness, the belief and trust. And the creation of that vibration is brought into the physicality of your world. Many of the earths, many of the earths before this earth existed, Mother Earth has existed at least six times before this time that you are living here on her. But many humans didn't exist. She was barren in expanse, but she was non-existence within the human evolution of time. She just existed and she went and she came back again. But the consciousness of the universe, with many asteroids and meteorites, many universes and stars that were once planets, come together and gather together as consciousness to create Mother Earth. This is how she was created so many times. It is beyond your understanding. I will try not to continue too much. But these nature spirits are forms of consciousness. They have come beyond many times of Mother Earth existing. They have lived on Mother Earth at least six or seven times within their lifetime as Mother Earth was created and then didn't exist again. As she was taken out by the asteroids and many other situations and then recreated again within the consciousness of space. But these elemental creatures come from a great expansion of consciousness over millions and thousands and millions of trillions of years of many planetary systems 
many earth times. Earth has existed for many millennia and will continue to do so. And she will decease again, of course, and there will be no more Mother Earth. And she will be that star once again exploded into the universe of space. And she will recreate again and recreate. She is limitless within her consciousness of time and space. But yes, getting back to the elementals, they are part of that consciousness. The nature spirits are part of that. They are the recreation of Mother Earth and the continual axle of space and time, continually evolving and developing. So yes, their levels of vibration are higher than ours because we have been in the living world. These nature spirits have been part of the universal space, universal space and time and dimensions. We have not come from the dimensions, we have come from Mother Earth to Spirit. So yes, they vibrate and bring that unconditional love to you all that you feel when you are in Mother Nature. You connect with a vibration of plants, you feel their energy, you see the light of Spirit in nature. Just because their vibration is so strong, but they will continue, they will continue to work with you within that energy. But many of you may be connected to the elementals. It is because you have come from a time with them, from another time in space. There are many of you within this universal consciousness within Mother Earth who have lived in these time spans within Mother Earth, and she existed before this time too. So many of you that are connected to the light beings too will have that higher state of consciousness. That is why some of you are able to connect to the light language because you have lived on the old Mother Earth too. Nazi? Yes. So with that being said, as we talk about energies, good or bad, are there, and there's a theory in some realms that there are good, in, uh, good fairies and bad fairies. Is that really the truth or is that just uh, somebody's idea? Well, of course, you know, that uh, on your, where you are now, you have people that uh, maybe react with hostility mm -hmm. and maybe react with a lower vibration. Mm -hmm. So there is always good and bad within the earthly realm. But within spirit, which you must understand, and even with the elemental spiritual people, is they have, uh, I would say, they don't come from a negative vibration because they can't experience that. They haven't lived within the vibration of the human beings to experience that negative vibration. Mm -hmm. It is only the mis I would say the misdiscerning of the energy. I've tried to get Janine out of the way here. It's the misdiscerning of the energy and the vibration from the human mind. Once the spirit starts to connect with the human mind, you will start to understand the elemental energy, the vibration that they are bringing you. They are not coming from any negative intent. But as from the spirit realm, from our dimension and time, we work with the highest vibration. We only come to help you, to serve and to bring our word, to work with all the mediums, and of course yourself, my dear. But some of the spiritual people, as I have mentioned before, as Alice has said, they have gone to spirit with a little bit of trauma that they have carried from their earthly lives. They are trying to process that. They are trying to work with that. And sometimes they will come into connection with a physical person within the earthly realm and their vibration will be very similar to theirs. So their vibration will be very similar. So hence that person on the living world is yourself, my dear, may experience a negative situation with a spiritual being. It is not because they have come with the negative intent, it is because they are working through their own healing, understanding what has happened to them, where they have come from. And we work with these spiritual beings. We try to take them to a place of healing and we work with their vibration because of course they will come back to Mother Earth again and experience that vibration of learning all over again. So when you are connecting with an energy that maybe your feelings is negative, it is the discernment of energy again. 
collective understanding that spiritual being is trying to connect to you, trying mm -hmm. to understand their own healing, as well as they'll be connecting to you for your healing experience too. Beautiful. Um, what is a twin spirit? The twin flames, of course. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, of course, they uh, are. Okay. You call them the uh, twin flame, of course, mm -hmm. but you are all interconnected, aren't you? Mm -hmm. From many different lifetimes, you are this, you call it the soul family, don't you? Mm -hmm. The soul mm -hmm. connection, that vibration. Many of you would have had relationships or past experiences of marriages through many different lifetimes. And I would say that you will experience your dream of dying, will come and work with you within that vibration. So you all connect. So yes, the twin flame, as you call it, is just a past connection, past marriage, a relationship, a very strong tie, a strong bond that you would have experienced with this person in another life. But they come from the spirit to work with you sometimes. And they choose to meet you in your medicine time in your earthly form. But many of you will already know this vibration. But the twin souls are very complicated. The relationships of little birds, they very much can't be one without the other. They can't live without each other. But the relationships are very complex because they have come from a place where there's a lot of trauma and a lot of healing. When they come together on the earthly realm, they have come to teach each other from spirit in their reincarnation to evolve and to help each other learn and learn from those experiences. But of course, if one decides, well, I'm not going to come back, I want to stay in spirit, they will connect with my partner from the spirit to the earthly form that way and come and teach them the experiences of their awakening, their evolving for the next part of their development. Mm -hmm. Yes, perfect. Um, well, talking to our spirit, and I'm assuming this from Marilyn, I'm assuming you're meaning um, your higher self. Uh, will talking with them bring answers to life lessons quicker? Talking to the spirit. Hi, Ethel. How are Hello, you? My dear, there has been lots of conversation, hasn't there? There has been. Lots of questions and answers. I don't take questions very much. I just say my piece. Okay. Well, you we may that. ask the questions, my love. Well, when we're talking to our spirits about things that are going into our life, with talking with them, will our lessons come quicker by interacting with our higher self? Yes, of course, my dear. You have the answers. You all have the answers within yourselves. You can talk to the spirit, your spirit. It comes with the answers. It is the mind that only has the questions. Once you connect to that self, you will already know the answers. But you say, well, I can't listen to myself. What a lot of nonsense you're going to say. I'm a little bit different, my dear, to Alice and Richard. But it is not nonsense. You are in the world of the living. As we teach you to talk to the soul. We talk to you and we help you communicate with the self. Your team, your guides are always wanting to help you to connect with that. It is like looking into the expansion of your light, looking into the expansion of your soul and seeing the light vibrate and seeing the energy within yourselves. Communicate with your soul. And when you communicate with yours and your spirit, you will talk to other souls. 
you won't speak to the person that is in front of you, you will speak to their spirit. You will communicate with their spirit and see their path. You are all interconnected. You are all communicating on a communicational spiritual vibration. That is what it is needed. Mm. Connect to one another from your spirit, mm. not from the mind. Mm. The greater connection of yourselves will be achieved, my dear. That was beautiful. Thank you. This is the last question. When we have a loved one that passes over that hurts us deeply, how do we go about forgiving? that particular person forgiveness is always within your spirit it is the mind that won't forgive the spirit the person that you have been hurt by it was planned for you to experience and to learn and to heal from that. They have decided the same too. You have both decided that agreement, the agreement to learn. Janine doesn't understand why she doesn't get along with her husband sometimes. <laughs> But she learns to understand that they have come to experience each other and to experience love, to experience upset and even experience anger. All emotions are there. They come from the mind and they come from the spirit. You have to experience all emotions to learn to heal. If you just experience love mm -hmm. all the time, you would never experience the challenge to heal. You have to feel the vibration of frustration. Mm -hmm. You have to feel the emotion of anger. It is all part of the learning about unconditional love. Mm -hmm. You have to feel the emotions of yourself mm -hmm. to reach the pinnacle moment of unconditional love. You must go through the anger, the pain, the frustration. And you won't want to feel it sometimes. You won't want to experience it. But it comes with the great teachings. It comes from the great teachings of God. The teachings of your soul. We cannot help you from the spirit unless we learn to experience those emotions too from our earthly lives before we had to feel that essence of emotions in order to help you understand from spirit side mm -hmm. you will feel the emotions into your soul but it's to work with the emotions and understand anger comes from love anger comes from the frustration of life but it is because you want to receive the love you want to give to the love you want to help all and you want to feel compassion from all around you it all comes from the great source of unconditional love when somebody hurts you you are angry which Janine gets occasionally. <laughs> but you get angry because you want to feel the love. You want to give the love. And you don't understand why others are not the same. 
It is all the experience of life, my dear. I don't talk a lot, I don't. She doesn't like to let go very much with me, my dear. That she is learning to understand the different vibration that we come in to talk. That was beautiful. Thank you so much. I really, really learned a lot and appreciate it very much. Does any, do you have any last words before we let you go? Which is the longest time that I have spoken to her today. But in my time, I was a lonely lady, my dear. I didn't have many around me. I used to sit, and I used to sit for many hours, and I would read, and I would empower my mind with knowledge. Mm. But I was a lonely lady in my day. I used to sit, but I didn't have very much good health in my day. So it is difficult for Janine to work with me because I sort of hunch her over a little bit, but I try not to do it. But I spent much time alone discovering my spirit and my soul. But I bring the knowledge of this too with the other guides, as we all do. But experience being with the self, being alone, connecting to that spirit that you are, until you take a step back from everything that is happening with all around you, and to look within and go into the silence of yourself. When I was alive in the time, I had not much family around me. I did not have many to talk to. I'd sit there for many hours contemplating upon my day on what I would do upon my day. But I learned with the skill and empowerment of the science of the mind as the great force and creator of your soul. When you come into the silence, you will speak to your soul. You will understand it and feel it within. You will communicate with it and it will respond and it will bring the answers of empowerment and it will bring every answer and question that you desire in your physical life. Just allow it to happen and come into that quietness. Bring the mental mind, put it to one side and invite the spirit to walk forward with your spiritual guides. They walk with your spirit. They blend with your spirit. They communicate with your spirit. But yet your mind steps in the way. We see it time and time again. Allow us in. Allow us to talk to you, to the essence of you and your vibrational spirit. Allow it to talk. Open the mouth of the spirit. Open the light of the spirit. It has been closed in your heart for two millennia. Mm. Too long as the mind has taken over the heart. Allow the mind to step back, my dears. And let the heart come forward for your future. It will advise you. It will guide you for the future. The information from your past lives is there, waiting to be grabbed, waiting to be communicated with. Don't close the door on your own spirit. You are, you have come from that dimension with us, with your families from spirit, your loved ones. Don't close the door on your hearts, my dear. Beautiful. Thank you. 
That was very nice, Ethel. So I want to thank everybody for being here and communicating with us, Richard, Alice, Ethel. Um, My dear. And, and thank you for your time. So. Wonderful. I will uh, bring her back now. Then okay. She's tired. So. Thank you. Oh, hello. <laughs> You're drowsy. God, I'm boiling. <laughs> oh. We're going and going and going. I, I mean, wow. Wow. Um, sorry. <laughs> A little <laughs> longer because Ethel got really chatty. Oh, my heart. <laughs> You'll see it in the recording. It was like I got it to the last question almost at the hour, and then Ethel came in and. She said she doesn't talk, but she had a lot of really beautiful words, I have to say. They were beautiful. Are you okay? Are yeah, you I just feel dopey. Uh -huh. <laughs> I feel like I've had one too many bottles of wine. Oh, <laughs> my neck is killing me. Oh, my God. <laughs> I don't know what was asked or what was questioned or anything. I don't remember any of it now. We, we tried to cover all the gamut, but spirituality was a big topic. How was it? Soul and how the soul works and communication and love, unconditional love. Interesting, fascinating. I would like to come back at some point and talk about the way a soul develops before coming into the world as a human. That was yeah. very intriguing. Very oh, intriguing. I don't remember any of that. <laughs> I, I, like, I have no memory of it whatsoever. <laughs> Which is unlike me because sometimes, well, I usually don't have memory of it, but sometimes mm -hmm. they must have taken me a lot deeper today. Hence, because I was a bit nervous. So they probably just oh. had to knock her out. <laughs> Richard started off telling on you being nervous. <laughs> oh, did he? <laughs> I hope that wasn't me getting in the way there. <laughs> no, that one was it. <laughs> He's just oh. telling on you. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Who is here anyway? I don't know who's here. Oh, oh, there there has been 20 at some at one point there was 22 people here. Brenda, David, McCarvey, uh Lorna, Lini, Pam, um Lin, sorry, Lenard, <laughs> Marilyn Free. Uh yeah, Karen Blashard, uh Linus Angel. Mm. Oh, I saw I missed Fran. Sorry, Fran. Um, <laughs> you must not have commented. I try to keep up with everybody's questions. I only got to, I did some that were asking it and some that I had gotten prior. So I did the best I could and try to keep it in some kind of you know order. What, but the one thing that I've been struggling with at the gatherings and, and everybody will tell you that anyway, mm -hmm. you know, Joe, mm -hmm. that when people ask my guides a question, they get like half an hour explanation of it. And I'm thinking, I keep saying to Richard, I keep saying, could you shorten the version down just a touch, you know? But no, it never happens. They just, they know, they're giving their explanation. It's almost like they get really excited, isn't it? And they put, no, we're going to give you that. But they all said very important things too, though. And it was all very, like, compounded upon each other and was very supportive of the other statement. So I feel like it was really a good build to... Um, a whole topic, I think. Yeah. Understanding a whole topic. One question I didn't get to, and it was right at the end, but I knew if I answered it, Ethel would go on, and I didn't want to do go it. On and, on, yeah. some reason, <laughs> and I don't know why, David, maybe you can ask. David had asked if Ethel liked birthday cake. <laughs> oh, Ethel, the birthday cake. Oh, right. I was ashamed she didn't answer that. I but didn't yeah, want to ask it because you had already gone over and I was like, if I ask a question again, this is going to be another 10, 15 minutes. And, 10, another 15, 15 and I, minutes. 
<laughs> Thomas Janine, I would not go that long. So oh my God. I gave somebody, was it, I can't even remember who it was. It was somebody last year. Oh, I've got an echo now. Somebody last year I gave a reading to. And I think we started at three o'clock and it was six o'clock. I came out of trance. Wow. It was that long. And I thought, really? Was that? I can't even remember who it was now. If anyone can remember who that was, put your hands up. But three hours. They said, I'm so sorry, Janine, but we couldn't stop talking to him during the analysis. It was like three hours. It is hard to stop. That wisdom and that um, guidance and that knowledge is so, it's so intriguing. It's hard to stop. I think the biggest thing too, though, is about um, the traumas that we have, that we look in our lives that are bad. And yet that really is what creates who we are. It creates that learning and that growth and the vibrational resonance. And so we try to steer, you know, and she, you were mentioned a few times on not liking that part of life. <laughs> really? So what I said, they're terrible. You, you hear the recording. But no, I was really. <laughs> you know what, though? I was like, oh, my gosh, they get really personal. <laughs> In the beginning, they were starting to say something about me. I was like, oh, what did I get into? Wait a minute. No, they say it and read. They're terrible in readings and things like that. They, they'll talk uh, about me sometimes. I don't know why they do it. But I don't know. Maybe they're trying to explain that I'm human as well and that, uh, yeah, I don't know, that's maybe what it they're is. trying to put across. And, yeah, I think yeah. that's what it is, to show that you're learning this as well as the rest of us are learning this and yeah. it makes sometimes, you I tell you, this will make you laugh. Sometimes my guides will tell people things, not private things or anything like yeah, that, but yeah, um, things in the readings, things I've done in the morning that I wouldn't even dream of saying to them, but they'll say it in the reading, but me personally wouldn't dream of saying it. And then I come back and they're reading, they're, both, they're all laughing, like, it's just, just like, <laughs> just the, it's just the way my guides work. It's, uh -huh. it's, they just work like that. I don't know why they do, but... So one of the questions that it's so funny because Richard actually answered two people had asked, you know, what was the history? When was Richard here? But I'm sure people would be interested if you're up to it, if you can give a little background of who your guides are. Right. OK. <laughs> I have to be careful with Richard to protect his identity. OK. Uh -huh. OK. Um, but the time I might period. Be, can you yeah I, I can't tell you too much because it's mm -hmm. quite well known but in, uh -huh. in my family but he comes from the early eight well mid 18th century mid 18th century he was quite a famous writer mm -hmm. in our family because mm -hmm. our whole family come from writers I'm, I'm giving you the edited version because okay. when I've disclosed who Richard is I have to be a little bit careful because otherwise I get a bit bombarded but mm -hmm. he wrote a lot my family were writers um Ayland was a writer, my grandfather, Christine was a writer as well. So she was Christine Etheridge. They both write books. Richard wrote books. But Richard, the history behind him in our family is that mum said that he was my great, great uncle from the 18th century, which was on my grandfather's side. But then he came through another trance medium to incite poetry to me. OK, so I'm giving you the slightly edited version because I have to protect other medium's name. So he came through another trans medium to prove that he was channeling through me. Now mm -hmm. he channeled my poetry with me and he would he'd be the one coming through me when I was doing all those written readings right in the beginning. Do you remember in the early times when I was doing all the written email readings? Mm -hmm. He would come through and slowly over a progression of time, he's gone from there to the trance. So he's come through in that way. So I've had the evidence from another trance medium from coming through to say, to say, look, I'm here. This is who I am. And oh, you're frozen there slightly. Oh, hang on. You frozen? Yeah, there. my internet is. I'm trying to. Am I still um, frozen? No, no, no. No, you're not now. And anyway, he came through this okay. other trance medium, okay, and said, "Oi, I'm here," and started inciting, inciting poetry. And then Alice decided to talk through them too, to say, "Oi, I am t talking through you, and I'm now talking through this medium too." So they brought so much evidence, and then we went into this. It must have been a, over a two-year uh -huh. period investigating 
where my guides came from and I had multiple readings of another trance medium too to bring the evidence of my guides through because I wanted more evidence of them mm -hmm. because I was so determined not to let them talk through me until I'd had bomb proof of who my guides were because I was really stubborn and I wanted to know and I kept going back for these trance readings right I want to connect with Alice I want to know what's going on with Richard I want to know more and then yeah. gradually as the trust built I allowed mm -hmm. them to both start coming through to talk to me. Mm -hmm. um, now, what was the time um, period of Alice? Alice is on, uh, she's actually connected by bloodline to Richard. Okay. So she would be on Richard's side of the family too from the mm -hmm. same, time, per same okay. time period. She was a nurse in her time. She used to be a part mm -hmm. of the war veterans. Mm. She was also uh, a great artist as well. So mm. it's probably where all my, my creativity has come from, Alice, with the mm. drawing and painting and stuff that I've been doing. So she's come through the great that great time. But once those two guides came through the trance medium to prove that they were connected to me, it's then that we done even more research into the family tree to find out exactly who they were. Mm. Hence, we were able to find pictures of Alice wow we were able to find pictures of richard as well so we wow. got the evidence of who they look like mm -hmm. who they were but i've had to at great length mm -hmm. with richard obviously um to keep his identity a little bit dampened down because mm -hmm. um because obviously pub you know it's respect for the spirit i don't really want yeah do you know what i mean yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, how about Ethel? Because I know Ethel is somewhat new to you. What is the background on Ethel? Uh, Ethel's really new into my energy. Um, okay. She hasn't been coming through long at all. Yeah. Now, I had Ethel suddenly made an appearance during sitting for physical mediumship. Mm -hmm. She made an appearance through physical. So if I hadn't sat for physical, I doubt she would have made an appearance. Mm -hmm. But she was working with me. I was sort of blending with her for a little bit. And a medium came to me and said, oh, who's Ethel? And I thought, what are you talking about? How the hell did you know? She hadn't seen Ethel blending with me. She hadn't seen the trance demonstration, anything with Ethel uh -huh. whatsoever. And she said, is it a little old lady that's hunched over that sits next to a fire? I said, how the hell did you know? She said, because Ethel's here trying to reach out to you. And I said, well, who is Ethel? Because I didn't know who I was channeling. Huh? And she said, I feel like Ethel may be a, a descendant of yours, a grandmothery type figure. Mm -hmm. That's all I know about Ethel. I don't know anything else. And another medium came to me and gave some evidence about Ethel, who'd never heard Ethel speaking to me. So she'd yeah. really worked hard to to yeah. say, hey, I'm here. Yeah. I'm talking through you. So she yeah. worked really hard to... To come into the energy yeah so ethel i know very little about interesting well she explained a little bit about herself in this yeah this group yeah. so <laughs> yeah she was sitting but, alone, um, she was alone but yeah alice was a part of our distant family obviously none of my family met her because it was out of our time frame right. and also richard um richard has actually got a memorial of himself in a church somewhere wow wow um, and he's written a book that most people know about, but that's what I'm going to disclose about. Was it the we're Bible? The last... No, I'm joking. No, it wasn't the Bible, no. I was we're the last... <laughs> Myself, my mum, and Ayland, who's passed, which is uh -huh. my granddad, were the last descendants of Richard in the family. So, mm. wow. yeah, I'll leave you all guessing. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? We're all going to be in the 18th century. Who wrote books and what did they write kind of? Oh no, Websites. We, we all know, we all know. <laughs> but I mean, I think the thing is, um, I think there is so much you disclose on, or, you know, you disclose sometimes. Sometimes you have to protect your energy and your guides and yeah, because, yeah, you know, it's, it's uh, I think it's, it's just respectful of spirit, isn't it? Sometimes, right, to, right. Just, you know, protect their energy and, and yours and because otherwise I'll get loads of people messaging me going, oh, you know. <laughs> Yeah, so, you know, it's just, well, I, think I, I will reveal it one day, maybe one day, one day. It was, <laughs> it was a very beautiful, very, um, I think a very beneficial for everybody experience. So I hope everybody really enjoyed it and 
learn from it. Um, again, I'm sorry I didn't get to everybody's questions, but we tried the best we could. Yeah. I still think it was beautiful. There, the question, the answers to the questions were so amazing. I don't, I don't know. I can't remember what they said. Yeah. So it's just yeah. were. But we're uh, all connected by bloodline, so yeah, yeah. Whole family awesome. and, uh, now, in me in uh, trance, your guides are they usually connected to you through blood, or is it just a whatever? I mean, it just depends. I mean, I've had um, different guides come through. I've got another guide, John. Um, which Emma Mattler draws for me. Can you see it now? Yeah. He's talking. another one that comes through me, but mm -hmm. not very often. And um, Emma Mattler's an amazing, amazing drawer, isn't she? She's just mm -hmm. amazing to your guides. He comes through me. But apparently, um, when I had a reading, he's another fa a grandfather descendant as well. Wow. So I, I don't know... You know, I don't know much. Well, I don't know much about him, but he comes in and he works with a violet flame. He comes mm -hmm. through and brings, apparently, brings a lot of emotional guidance to mediums and things oh, like that. That's how he works with my energy, and um, so he comes through. And occasionally, um, occasionally, Native Americans will pop in and mm -hmm. come into my energy and say hello, and then they'll leave, and and then never hear from them again. Do you know what I mean? They're not. Yeah. They're just not connected to my family at all so yeah interesting i love it. if you guys don't know about the flames you should check them out but the violet transmuting flame that is the most amazing flame to work with yeah Thanks stuff. Amazing guys. yeah, yeah. amazing i love yeah. it well i'm happy to answer a couple more questions if anybody wants everybody's to. just listening i'm watching nobody everybody's just like that was fascinating uh i had a beautiful oh Sharon said that she had a reading with you and Richard and Alice and Jack. I haven't had Jack oh, yet. Yeah, yeah I haven't heard Jack. He hasn't come through today, has he? Yeah, I was waiting for Jack to come through. Yeah. Do you uh, know what, Jack is quite hard to, I find him quite difficult to work with because he speaks so fast and his vibration is totally different to mm -hmm. um, Alice and Richard and Ethel. So I really struggle with him. So mm -hmm. I tend to just sort of, I've avoided working with him and I shouldn't, you know. He's amazing. I love his energy. I love the way that he talks. He's like, just like shoot from the hip and yeah, he's really. <laughs> I must, the trouble is, it's so many spirit people coming in uh -huh. to my energy that you, yeah. you sort of get a little bit frazzled because you think, because if you get your mind in the way, thinking, you know, I'm just going to work with this guy and this guy, we can yeah. sort of, I know I narrow my. I narrow the possibilities of what can happen because I'm so comfortable with certain guides. I don't want to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good point when it comes to all the work we do. We don't want to lock ourselves in because, yeah. you know, seeing things from different points of view is really important in, in the overall picture. But I do feel like all of the guides that came through today definitely supported one another in what they were saying. It complements yeah. each other. Uh, that's a good question, Brenda. Um, I'd like to know your answer to this about do we always reincarnate? What do I think we reincarnate? Yeah. Or? Do you think that as a soul, all souls always reincarnate? Do, uh, me as a person now mm -hmm. and not my guides, I yes. think I find it quite confusing because I hear so many different theories. I know the one particular meaning actually believes that there is no such thing as reincarnation. And they, they believe we just go to the spirit and we don't come back again. And then you've got the other view, haven't you, that you go to spirit mm -hmm. and you come back. Mm -hmm. To be honest, I really... I don't know. I don't know. And I don't think I'm in a place to sit here and say we get reincarnated or we do this or we do that. I think we truly mm -hmm. don't know within our, I think we truly know within our own spirit, but I don't think we know until we reach to the spirit mm -hmm. what it's really about. Mm -hmm. And I, I think, that, do, do you see what I mean? I think, right. we have, yeah. I think we have to trust. Mm -hmm. We have to trust what spirit is bringing us. Mm -hmm. If Richard says that we reincarnated and we do this, and that's what we do, because mm -hmm. I believe in my team and believe in my guides. But for me, I believe in what they tell me. 
I love your statement. It's one that I stand by is that we can have theories while we're here as a human being, but we yeah. don't actually know until we go back into the spiritual world. And for me and my understanding and the way that I've worked, I feel like spirit has as much of a free will as we do as a human being. And that, you know, it's up to them whether they're going to reincarnate or when they would reincarnate. Because for us, time is fleeting, right? I mean, we don't think it is. A hundred years for us is like a hundred years. But in reality, in the scope of time, that's like a flash. Yeah. So, you know, who, who really yeah. knows? I think it's free will. Yeah, I think it's free will. And I honestly, if I was to sit here and say to you, I think we should be, it's reincarnation or I don't think it's reincarnation. Mm -hmm. That would be putting, I think that would be part of me trying to control what I think. Right. What it is. And I think it's, do you see what I mean? Because it's me speaking now. Right. When Richard's exactly. speaking, I get myself out of the way. So I truly believe what my guides say is what the right. facts are. Because they are with the facts. They have the facts. Yeah. <laughs> We're just trying to guess at the facts here as a human being. We know nothing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Which cracks yeah. me up when you hear people say, oh, this is dogmatic. This is the truth. This is this is the way it is. I'm like, yeah, no. Already yeah. I'm going to dismiss you because you don't know anything. You're here on this planet trying to get along just like the rest of us. So, no. I mean, we can have guidance to things through our spirits, our guides, yeah. our loved ones, but we don't really know until we get to the other side. We don't know, do we? I don't think if we were to try and, and try, if we were to try and stand here and dictate what we think is going to happen in that process or that next life or whatever's going to happen, mm -hmm. we don't really, really know. And I think in our physical life, because we mm -hmm. forget about it all, don't we? And we don't know what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Which is yeah. interesting that you ask that. Um, so where do spirits live while waiting to reincarnate? Well, spirits are living in the, they're living in this realm. They're living in all, as far as we know, we don't really know. So we're all yeah. guests here. We're but guessing. vibrational yeah. energy is all that separates from all the different realms is our vibrational awareness. Yeah. So here and there and everywhere, but reincarnation is only you deciding to come into human form again. That's all reincarnation is. Yeah. I have another lesson to learn. So I'm going to come to earth in that wonderful playground of trauma and craziness. <laughs> <laughs> vibration, according to what we heard today. Yeah. And so I can learn. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I would like to say, I would like to say in my heart, I'd like to say that. I believe in reincarnation and that right. all happens. Right. But how do we truly know? Right. Exactly. Do you know what I mean? So it's down to spirit to guide us, I think, with that. Well, I think it's funny yeah. because David said, uh, or somebody said, oh, Sharon said, ask the guides, uh, ask, ask Richard. But really, when you think about it, your understanding of Richard being a, because even Richard said, if you can remember and go back and listen to the, the recording, Richard said today, that something about him living in the 18th century, but he lived many other lives and he could talk in a different language if he wanted to, but he didn't. I didn't know you could do that. <laughs> yeah. He said, I could talk in a different language if I want. So that oh shows <laughs> that even Richard is supporting a reincarnation theory. Yeah. Um, but I'm sure somebody must have asked um, in, yeah. you know, but next time we'll ask Richard that question. Yeah. It's just my view. I think right. I, I've always believed, I want to believe reincarnation. I want to believe that we all come back and, and do uh -huh. that because I think it's a beautiful thing. And I'm sure it's true. Yeah. I'm sure it's true. If Richard says right. it's true, it's true. But then there's an element of me that says, if we sit here and and say, this is this, is this and this. Right. I think that we're, we're getting ourselves in the way of what really is. For now, because we're in this mm -hmm. lifetime. Yeah. It's distracting. Yeah. From what we're here for. Yeah. That's it, isn't it? It's a difficult yeah. one, isn't it? Yeah, difficult. but it's one of those questions I think that doesn't really matter because like I guess it mm -hmm. does if you're in the belief. Yeah. Oh, you froze again. All your lives, <laughs> right? And which I'm not sure I not I in one life, I'm gonna take all that baggage into another life. It just doesn't make sense to me or the pain yeah. or the whatever. I feel like from my experience and my belief system that I know nothing about because I'm a human being, 
But from my understanding of what I've experienced, I feel like every lesson that I learn in a life would just be something that built that chink or that character in that life that I now have yeah. learned from. And then the next life I yeah. learned this lesson, but I've already experienced this life. So therefore I'm just at, you know what I mean? So it's kind of like adding to, because it's like somebody had asked the question and I almost answered it, but I didn't is um, when we've learned a lesson, do we go back and relearn it again? And I debated asking that, but I didn't want to take whoever was talking off of the train that they were on. So I was trying to keep things yes. flowing. Um, yes. But I feel like, um, you know, that's what we're doing in this life. We learn a lesson. And once, like, there's some lessons that you kind of go through and you don't learn it. So you go back and do it again, right? But there's other lessons, like I know in my life, there's a couple lessons that I have done a severe enough way that I will never go back and do it again. Yeah. <laughs> done with that, I, know. I learned it. Yeah. <laughs> but there's others that took me a long time to revisit and revisit and revisit. So I think it's you and your life and your lessons. You know, it's weird because sometimes I say to my guides, why have you put me through this? You know, certain situations and challenges in my life, you know, things I've had to experience that haven't been so great. Mm -hmm. think, why do I have to keep experiencing this all the time? But guaranteed when I come to the end of that, mm -hmm. something really special happens. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yes. It really special happens. And one thing Richard has taught me mm -hmm. and shown me within myself that I have to, we have to trust what spirit are showing us and what they're, right. what they're bringing to us in this right. life. And we have to trust it, not try and analyze it and figure it out, but just allow the process to happen. And I agree with that. And that's a lot of what the conversation was about. And we started it out with that. You and I yeah. talked about that, having trust. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, you See. froze again. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> my internet. The to analyze it isn't going to change the fact that we're going through it. That's just the bottom line. Yeah. We're yeah. going to just go through yeah. it. So go through it and learn your lesson. Yeah. I'm going to try Press something it. really fast. Yeah. Hold on. Do you know? Um, what? I, I, I want to make sure this. Oh, you froze again. <laughs> oh, no, she's gone. Are you coming back, Joe? Oh, she's vanished. She's completely frozen in time there. I'll wait for her to come back. Are you there, Joe? No, she's completely froze, everyone. <laughs> I can't hear a word you're saying. Okay. Uh, All right. No, you're back. You're back. I'm hoping I took care of it. I think I took care of the issue, but yeah. problems happen. Okay, what were you saying? I'm so sorry. Oh, no, that's all right. I can't remember what I was saying now. Oh, what, what, what was it? Yeah. And I think to myself, why do people, if they're reincarnated, why do they come back and commit crimes? That's something I've never been able to get my head around. When people reincarnate and come back to commit a crime, is it to come back and learn from that experience and learn that they, what they've done is wrong? I, I try and ask it why that's happened. You know what? I have this video that will be playing on Facebook and YouTube that you can learn that answer from called oh. Janine Talk to Her Guides. Uh, and, and Marilyn said it, the guides mentioned, mentioned about coming back to learn life lessons. And yeah. the reason that we come in to do these things is to learn yeah. basically all that fear and that angst and that anxiety and that hatred and all that. Really, according to how I think it was Richard that talked about it. actually Richard and Alice both talked about it, um, about coming back to unconditional love and learning what unconditional love really is. It's, uh, the, the beginning of this, all of it was fantastic, but they really talked about why we go through our life lessons and why we're experiencing what we're experiencing. But yeah, that's a good question. Why? I don't know why we would choose to be horrible people, but I'm sure it's for the for our lessons of evolving. To lessons to learn, isn't it? Yeah, think, isn't yeah. It? Oh, no. my God. Because if you think <laughs> about it, it's one of my favorite things to talk about is this is all the illusion. This isn't real. This is all just kind of our playground of experiences, I think. Yeah. Yeah. My feeling. Yeah. 
I mean, it's just so much to learn, isn't it? I mean, sometimes mm-hmm. when I listen back to when Richard's speaking and some of the things that he talks about, and I think, okay, really, is that possible? I actually look back and I go, is that really, really possible? I, I can't actually, uh, certain things that he will say about certain things, isn't it? And you think, how can that be possible? And I sit there and I try and analyse it afterwards, after the gathering, and, and look back and go, did he really say that? How's that possible? And I try and analyse it in my head. <laughs> so when I'm out of trance, if you know what I mean, and I can't get my head around it. Whereas yeah. I'm in trance, Rich has got it there, you know, he's got yeah. it to hand and I haven't got it to hand at all when I'm out of trance. I just still don't understand and can't fathom some of the things that they talk about. Mm-hmm. It's very interesting. Um, every time that I have the yeah. opportunity to hear spirit talk, it's just so fascinating to me to get a perspective from spirit's point of view to yeah. how we just don't know anything while we're here. It's crazy. Yeah. And how we actually, somebody had asked about the main point that I asked is, can we get our, and I think I've asked Richard this a hundred times because it's like, I can't get my head around. We could do it wrong because I don't yeah. believe we can do it wrong, but I don't know if wrong is necessarily the right question because I don't know that anything we're doing is necessarily wrong. But when he was talking about that, I was thinking maybe the better answer or question would be, am I taking the harder road or the easier road? You know what I mean? Yeah. Instead of yeah. something, right or wrong because i think we learn from it all it's i know i I know i take the most complicated route ever i never go around things easy i'm gonna take the hard one i absolutely hands down and i'm gonna change my words marilyn i hear you yeah my past life i always took the hard road yeah um you know it's interesting david you were talking about spirits in a young uh, spirits in a young person is an old head on your young body. That's funny. But what you triggered me is there's a book that um, Marilyn told me to read. It's called The Soul's Journey. I can't oh, remember yeah. the name of the guy who wrote it. It's a fabulous book. But he talks about the younger spirits that come into human form. They always pick like this, like really pristine, great life. Yeah. <laughs> Where the old- <laughs> are like, let me make it as complicated and hard as I can because I really want to <laughs> Could you imagine as you're a spirit going, I think I'm going to make this crappy life for me so I can really learn a bunch of lessons. Do you know what, though? I, I mean, it's like I've been married to my husband now for like 28 years. And I can remember having a reading of a trance medium. Well, let's go back further than that, actually. Uh-huh. I met my husband, or was it but 28 years ago? And the first thing he said to me was, when's your birthday? And I said, well, 26th of January. And he says, well, mine's the same day. And he said, what What hour were you born? I said, oh, quarter to three in the morning. He says, I was born at quarter to three in the morning. I thought, what's going on here, you know? But there was three years apart of us. Wow. Apart from us, you know, difference between us. Uh-huh. And, I mean, I wasn't really tuning in with spirit then, but I said, I feel like we've had a past life together. So we went and got hypnotized and we got really good person in um, our local area. Very, very good. You know, he does a lot of hypnotizing past life and regression and all that sort of stuff. He took us back to the Cromwellian times. And me and Chris were in this time frame together, but a big situation happened during this time frame, which I won't bring up on the live stream. And many years later, we had a reading with a trance medium and they bought exactly the same the same time frame that we were together in and gave all the evidence to this through another trance medium. I thought, oh, my God. And there was so much stuff that happened during that past life with me and my husband Uh that everything that we had gone through that experience, we'd brought straight into this lifetime. There you go. It was validated to us That's crazy. from that trans yeah. medium. And every emotional, <laughs> physical thing we'd been through together in 28 years uh-huh. had happened to do with his past life. Oh, my and God. I'd even, I'd even bought um, marks back on my body from that past life. Oh, my gosh. So, so you showed and proved how my statements were incorrect and we really know nothing in this human life. We all know, we'll get it. All the answers we'll get when we go back into the spiritual world. Yeah, but then I say, well, I don't know if we had a past life, but then all that's happened to me. But maybe I'm a difficult person to convince. Do you know what I mean? But 
it does make you think. And then I sit there sometimes and my husband thinks, why were we brought together to go through all of this again? <laughs> when did we decide to come back and do this? Do you know what I mean? But then there's part of me who thinks, did we really have a past life? Did that really happen? So that's there's still part funny. of me that's, yeah. Now, why do you think you're so resistant to the possibility of a past life and being reincarnated? Is it a like a learned thing or is it an ingrained thing? I think there's part of me that wants to remain open to the information that comes from spirit and to not make a firm decision. Hmm. So I think, okay, we've had the evidence there. That could have happened. But there's part of me that wants to be, be neutral and receive the information and, and hmm. not make a judgment call on what I think it may have happened. It could be entirely different to what we think. Well, that's an interesting point of view because, okay, okay just from my thinking and my analyzing this, what you just said, if you think about, I don't want to have an opinion about it, but in kind of a way you do have, and this isn't putting you down, I'm just talking, right? You kind of do have opinion about it, but you want to keep open to it. But I would think that as you go into trance, you're surrendering completely anyway is the goal. So it really wouldn't matter about whether you have an opinion or not. I'm holding up your processes because my brain works like um, always second guessing what I'm doing, right? Because I'm still very new at it. So I'm constantly second guessing of what's reality or what's not reality. So yeah. it's funny. I mean, there's still a large part of me that hasn't surrendered. Yeah. I haven't seen that part of you when you're actually connecting to your guides. I, if you go deeper, I don't know where you're going to be. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Just a thought. I don't know if you can. <laughs> I'll, I'll disappear and after will travel somewhere probably and disappear off the screen. <laughs> Sorry. That's really okay. an interesting thing, though, that you said that in the the. I don't know. That's really, I'm going to have to think about that yeah. because, because I get what you're saying, but, um, but it's helping me to ponder about how I think when I go into trance is what I'm trying to get out. Yeah. I, I would love to, and it sounds silly to be, I'd love to be scientifically tested in trance uh -huh. Uh -huh. as in, you know, like what the brain waves do, how oh, much of yeah. us is involved, how much of us isn't involved, how much mm -hmm. of, it, of it is spirit. How much do we interpret what's coming out? Do you know what I mean? Because I'm quite a scientific person. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? I always want that evidence. Do you know what I mean? I'm really stubborn. I want the scientific evidence. But I think it's good to have scientific backup. I think mm -hmm. yeah, it is. To go with it. Yeah. I think that's why it's been so hard with Richard and Alice to let go because I've always wanted them to go, well, no, you have to. You have to do this, you have to do that and prove yourself because otherwise I'm not doing anything, you know. I'm not going to do these gatherings, you know. <laughs> Proof, please. <laughs> Poor spirit world. They must be driven mad, you know. I, I want scientific proof, you know. <laughs> hey, I'm with you on that one. I am totally with you on that one. Yeah, yeah. I, I always it. look at everything scientifically. It's like, you know, when yeah. you use the pendulum and mm -hmm. paranormal investigations, they use them. Yeah. But I look at it and go, well, Okay, that's the pendulum, but don't forget. I think, well, Richard always tells me we're all spirit. So, is that part of our spirit manipulating that movement and not necessarily the spirit world? So, then I'll debunk it and debunk it and debunk it until I get proof that spirit are bringing that through because that's just the sort of person I am. Do you so know what I mean? You know, a part of our, our own spirit that's influencing the pendulum or our mind, our mental mind influencing the spirit? I mean the pendulum. Yeah, it could be. It could be part of us, isn't it? Like the telekinesis, isn't it? When part of us are right. making that, yeah. that object. And, um, but yet if it's our our spirit, our spirit is all-knowing still. Yeah. It There's nothing wrong with our spirit because our spirit has all the answers as well. So it doesn't really matter. I was just reading about this, actually, about the, a lot of the times when the pendulum is moving, it's our higher self that's guiding us through the pendulum. So... I, to me, I guess my thought was it didn't matter whose spirit it was because spirit is pure and unconditional love either way. Yeah. Yeah. That's it, isn't it? Yeah. But, I mean, the, the spirit world are always trying to bring me proof. I mean, I remember, I'll let you go now, but I remember one time sat up in bed at 3 a.m. in the morning and this 
woman walks through my dressing room table, you know, long hair, black morning dress on, and I screamed the house down, like, you know, husband thought I'd been murdered or something. And they think, well, we just bought you proof, but you've just screamed the house down. <laughs> it's like, you know. Yeah, so I, I do a bit of convincing, I do. I'm terrible, aren't I? <laughs> That's okay. We all should question and not go into it blind, I think. Question. Yeah. Because you know, you know, you have to know you're doing the right thing. Otherwise, you're just a sheep. And yeah, I mean, well, I wouldn't want to. I wouldn't want to sit here and in front of everybody and go into trance if I wasn't completely convinced I was in trance. Right. You see what I mean? And you and I had a conversation about my little rant the other day, and we'll be having <laughs> that conversation about real and not real coming soon. So keep your eyes peeled. We're already planning a part three of this one my little rant. And I do want to say that we don't want to put anybody down, right? When my rant wasn't about putting anybody down, it's never about putting other mediums down or other trans mediums down. It's about ethics. And there are a lot of people out there that don't have ethics. And as we learn, these are all things that people are experiencing for a purpose. But I want to educate people so you don't become victims of unethical yeah. people. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I truly believe, and I truly believe, though, when somebody is working, I mean, I, I don't claim to be experienced. I don't really, because I mean, I'm such a novice when it comes to this. But from my own heart space, I truly believe when somebody is sitting to develop trance, I don't mm -hmm. think every trance medium's voice box is going to change. I don't mm -hmm. believe that's necessarily going to happen all the time. And I, mm -hmm. I believe that there is an essence of us speaking mm -hmm. with our guides, because it would be impossible for them to speak with us if we were totally totally out of the way do you know what i mean we wouldn't be right. alive would we and right I, I think that we all have to believe as trans mediums that in order to process and be able to speak in trance that we have to accept that there is part of us in that because if we're too busy trying to shove ourselves out of the equation we're pushing our own spirit out of it right. and therefore we're pushing the spirit world out because they need right. us to communicate right exactly um, do you know what i mean i do um, but there's that part of knowing, and look, we're going to wrap it up here because we're going on two hours, and I know everybody. Yeah, we'll be on there like for three hours. I know, we'll go on for three or five. But I feel like um, just really quickly, it's that fine line between surrender because they do need to use us like that really passive active, but it's that real surrendering of the soul, real surrendering of that your humanness to allowing spirit to do it. To, yeah. so, so it wasn't it. Isn't it more like um, when you actually go into trance, then your guides are using you, but it's that that line between going into trance where you're passive active. And then once you're in trance, you become passive passive. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's it. I mean, I, mean I, I just sort of feel very when Richard and Alice come in, you know, when you, it sounds really, really weird. People might be put off. I don't mean to put people off, but it feels a little bit, you know, when you've had a little bit of a glass of wine, I suppose most mm -hmm. trans me do. Oh, mm -hmm. my stream will feel like that. I feel like a bit tipsy, like I've had mm -hmm. too many glasses of wine and then I know they're in my energy. And so they sort of make me feel a little bit drunk. That's what <laughs> I feel. So, yeah. <laughs> All right, everybody, we can go on and on. This conversation will be again one day, I'm hoping. Thank you very much for all of your wonderful guides that came through and for your energy and your kindness and your love and sharing your time with us. It's been really an, an honor. Oh, well, you know, I'm just little Janine here, aren't I? So <laughs> still learning, still evolving, you know, and you think yeah. it's a lot of being trans means been out there for a long time, doing it a long, long time. So yeah. We get great knowledge from their, their experience as well, don't we? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right, everybody. Thank you for sharing and being here and your questions and um, your support. So everybody thank take you. care. Well, thank Bye. you, Joe. Oh, See you're you very nice. Bye, everybody. Oh, Bye. <laughs>